Hi, welcome back to the channel, y'all. For those of you who just joined me, I'm Amir, a 21-year-old Singaporean runner who's sharing my journey in track and field via this channel. It's currently 8.30 on a Tuesday, which means I've got a morning gym session to get to before my afternoon track session. Last episode, I said I'd shed a little more light on my journey in track and field, some lessons that I've learned since my first 5K, and also some bonus advice on training structuring. But before we begin, let me go get ready to start my day, then I'll take you with me. On a typical Tuesday, I'd be awake at 5.15am and in the gym by 6. But since I have no work today, I slept in a little, and I'm heading to the gym at 9. Last week was a surprisingly long week of training, considering the fact that it was supposed to be my deloading week. But all things considered, I think I'm ready for my upcoming training block, which is going to be highlighted by my 5k track race. Now y'all must be thinking, but Amir, you're running a 5k, why do you need to hit the gym? In my 8 years of running, I've come to realise that regardless the distance, strength training is important. In my early years of running, I never used to take strength training properly, even though my first coach had made it compulsory for us to do bodyweight exercises post-training. However, after being stagnant for 2 years, I was desperate to find something that would help me improve, and that was when I realised that improving my overall strength may have been the spark that I needed. And I was right, working on my strength made me more durable and explosive on the track, which in turn allowed me to get more training in and at faster paces. I also realised that the faster I got, the more important it was that my body was strong, hence why I still place such a big importance on my strength and conditioning, with 3 gym sessions a week at the moment. I hit the gym throughout the year because I believe in training for strength year round, the same way I structure my running training year round. What changes is what I work on depending on what phase of my running training I'm in. In the end, it's about keeping the main thing the main thing. And right now, the main thing for me is my running. What's up guys? So I'm back from the gym. I just had lunch. Now you're probably wondering what my typical weekday of training looks like. So on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, I'll hit the gym early in the morning before work. Then in the afternoon or sometimes in the evenings, I'll have my track sessions. Then on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, I'll just do an easy run on the treadmill in the gym. So right now, um, I'm just going to get some work done, maybe get a nap in before I head out for my afternoon track session. So I'll see you all when I get ready for training later. Yeah. In my previous video, I had mentioned that I'm running the 5k as it was the best race distance to gauge my fitness level at this stage of my training. What I didn't share was why specifically the 5k. For starters, I'm currently in my general preparation phase where my focus is primarily on clocking in the miles to build a larger aerobic base and to improve my lactate threshold to 3k and 5k workouts. I had actually targeted to run the Pokari Sweat 2.4 National Championships in September and was invited to race in the Elite Trials. However, a personal slip up prevented me from competing in the trials. Anyways, back to the matter at hand. Since I'm usually well into my general preparation phase in October, my coach and I felt that racing the 5k would be a good target race. Okay, I'll let you in on something. My coach thinks that I should focus on the 5k because he reckons that I may have a talent in the distance. Will I do it? To be honest, I don't know. What I do know is, I am getting a lot more comfortable running distance intervals now. In my opinion, my comfort is probably due to my increased mileage and also me being a little bit more mature with my intervals and my mindset towards training. Either way, I don't know if I'm going to move up. For this season at least, I'm going to stick to the 800 and the 1500, maybe with a few more 3k races while I'm in Perth. I definitely have room to improve in my 5k, especially since this will be my second official track, uh, 5k track race. We'll see how things unfold, but in the meantime, let's get back to the video. Since last October, I've ran multiple races and gotten personal best in the 4, 8, 1500 and the mile. I'm only counting official race personal best, not those done in relays or trainings. Yes, I know, my 400 time is pretty slow, but I've definitely ran faster in training. I'm presently working on my race execution for the 400 because one of the many things I've learned from my 5k last year is that my speed, specifically my speed towards the tail end of a race, needs to improve. Another thing I need to work on is my focus. During a race, I tend to be hypersensitive to everything going on around me, so much so that I lose focus of the race at times. Knowing this, my coach has had me do more tempo work and more runs at moderate intensity such that I'm forced to lock in and stay focused on the task at hand. Coach has also advised I need to be at my most focused in the 3rd and 4th K of a 5K. 
I actually made many mistakes during my first full season of training last year. Mental burnouts, numerous overuse injuries, falling ill constantly, you know, the usual pitfalls in figuring things out. But I've taken those lessons and learned as best I can. At the moment, I safely average about 40 miles a week and strength train 3 times a week. I take a down week every 4th week to make sure I'm fresh because I realise that's what works for me. With the higher mileage that I've been running, I've been able to lock more moderate to hard mileage, be that tempo work, intervals, pace runs or hill repeats. And it has been working for me, so you know how the saying goes, don't fix what's not broken. Okay guys, so how was training? 10 out of 10 good training. training, good training. Training good ah, uh? training good ah. Uh? So ah. Uh? Anybody DNF? Keep! <laughs> wow! <laughs> no, 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 this time was got them. I'm still getting back. Okay, guys, so I'm home for training. Um, it was a decently tough training session today, but coach always puts us through our paces. So I'm glad that you all could get some videos of us running today. Um, thankfully, my junior Ruben could help us get some good shots. So shout out my boy Ruben at Slow Looks. I hope you all enjoy his shots. Today's training recap. Did some squats in the morning along with some other exercises. Then my afternoon track session was a 5k tempo, followed by a 10 times 200 speed endurance workout. All in all, I'm rather satisfied with the session. I was feeling kind of tired from the warm up because of the heat, but the 5k felt rather good. Pharrell and I are almost always on the same page now when it comes to pacing. I usually leave a workout thinking I could have done something better, but today felt like it was all good. And of course, I'm glad that my juniors finished their workouts as well. Okay, now on to the tips I promised. Keep in mind that these tips on structuring training are going to be generic and surface level. I'll probably need an entire video to go more in depth. First tip, as with anything, you need to set your goal and set milestones to achieve. Then set your plan on how to achieve said milestones. The plan can and will most probably change. But set your initial plan first, then as you go along, you'll learn how to adapt and change. Second tip, build your base. Think of your running ability as a pyramid. For the pyramid to go higher, you'll need a larger and stronger base. Similarly, for you to get better at running, you're going to need a stronger and larger aerobic base. Then once that is done, you can add more layers to your running game through tempo runs, hill repeats, speed intervals, distance intervals, and speed endurance workouts. And the importance of doing this cannot be overstated. If you do not have a firm base, doing the additional things will be fleeting you'll likely get injured sooner than you can reap the benefits. And finally, if you have a coach, sit down with your coach and understand what you're training for. Why are you doing this workout or that workout? Do not ask questions with the intention to be difficult. Ask because you want to internalize the purpose. We humans are simple. If we can find purpose in something, then it's easier to be done. With that, I'm going to wrap up this episode. Once again, thank you all for watching this episode today. If you liked it, do leave a like. And for all those new to the channel who have enjoyed my content thus far, do subscribe so that you can enjoy more content like this. In the next episode, I'll share more about my thoughts on this upcoming 5K race and my mindset towards training for such an event. I'll see you all soon. Peace. Hi guys. So how are you guys? Hi. Welcome to back to episode number 2. <laughs> Say, Brody, I don't know.